why they're opening it up, why they're doing this, and why Germany just responded on shutting its borders. And then Austria responded by closing their borders. Because, see, both have been politically correct, pointing the fingers at each other, saying, well, you won't shut your borders, so we won't shut ours. Well, Germany did it first. Hungary tried to close its borders. It couldn't. In the last couple of months, a half million people have poured in. It is hell on earth in many major cities. With people like the walking dead migrating just through the towns, through everything, robbing, stealing. And, hey, if I had starving kids, I'd probably start stealing. It doesn't matter, though. I don't dislike water, as I've said a thousand times. But if a dam breaks and I'm downstream and 100 feet of water is coming at me at 60 miles an hour, I'm going to get up above the water line. I don't dislike those poor Muslims, many of which are victims of Western policies to destabilize them. I realize they're the next wave of destabilization that we told you was coming. I mean, if Switzerland had collapsed because a radioactive meteorite crashed into it, I'd say, Germany, take the Swiss, because they would assimilate. But you cannot assimilate millions and millions of people from poor Middle Eastern countries that are predominantly Sunni and driven by an ideology of Wahhabist, kill the West, cut their heads off, command they convert to the, you know, or kill them with a sword. No! This is fundamentally the end of the West if they're able to do this. And so now they've closed their borders because they realize they can't even organize and assimilate the couple million extra they got. And that might mess up how they're already bringing in a couple million a year to Europe to begin with. And so they're just going to slow it down to make it look like they're doing something to then open it back up again in a couple months. But you watch, that's not even going to work. The flood has now started. They've now incentivized. And so get for the next wave, it's going to be like 5 million, not 2 million. It's about to slam. Well, there's a lot of stunts going on out there with the ongoing world depression that's hit the third world so hard. It hasn't hit the West as hard yet. Yet. But we see the rise of support for right-wing parties in Germany during the crisis. Hungary deploy army to stop migrants at borders. Serbian official says we are not a concentration camp when we put people in refugee camps. Egyptian billionaire identifies islands for refugee havens. Yeah, he did this a month ago. He's back out doing it now, saying it's racist that Europe isn't taking unlimited uh, groups of people into it. So he wants to organize an island that's basically a hub to bring them even more in. It's an island right up against the coastline with Europe so that uh, he can have the boats that go back and forth uh, to North Africa and the Middle East and then bring them there to then get in more safely. He'll capitalize off of the huge flood of destabilization after our government, led by Hillary Clinton, the State Department, took out Gaddafi, took out Hazi Mubarak, tried to take out Assad, took out a bunch of other areas, and then blew everything up, chopped the Christians' heads off, crucified people upside down, blew up the churches, hundreds of churches alone in Egypt in the one-year rule of the West Puppet were blown up, were burned. Christians murdered by the thousands. Our government quarterbacked that. And the, the same globalists run our government that run Europe right now opened the door up. So did that help Egypt destabilizing them, killing their tourist industry? Did that help Libya? No, they admit it's a failed state. Oh, it's a mistake Hillary made, but she didn't get in trouble. They went there to destabilize it. Same thing in Syria. But they feed off our political, geopolitical, cultural ignorance and say, gee, there are a lot of Christians getting hurt. We need to bring them into America. Well, I'll tell you this right now. I am for bringing Syrian Christians to this country because Christian Middle Easterners have been proven to be extremely integratable. In fact, Arabic Christians, statistically, you can look this up in criminology, are one of the lowest crime rate groups, one of the highest income earner groups there are. And just like Switzerland looks at the demographic, they look at, do you bring something to the table? I'll take all the brown-skinned people you got. If they've proven they'll perform inside a Western country, 
because it's cultural, it's not the skin color. And the Christian culture is what ended slavery. The Christian culture is what gave us liberty. It's what promoted it. In the main, in history, there were other contributing factors as well. And that's why I'm sick of hearing that Christianity's bad and Christianity's stifling openness. And Christianity's, that's pure baloney. The problem is, and this was even in mainstream BBC reports, many of the refugees to get in are claiming they're Syrian when they aren't. They're Pakistani, they're you name it. From all over the Middle East and Central Asia, Afghan. And when they get in, well, they turn around and they're really a Muslim. And again, I'm not against Muslims. There are many Muslims that are very integratable, very hardworking. The problem is these groups demographically are the poor masses, many of which came into Syria and other areas to be part of the takeover and have now failed, so they want to come here. So a lot of them aren't Syrian and they're not Christian. They've been faking that in their asylum filings. So Glenn Beck says that he wants to smuggle them over here. He vows to smuggle them into the country. That's a World Net Daily article. But you better believe that if Beck does smuggle Christians into the country, they'll probably try to put him in jail and say, you're a trafficker in people. You are engaged in a crime of, of, of breaking our federal laws. And then Glenn Beck can defend himself and say, we have the Border Patrol on record, and we have the video shot by Infowars.com of them admitting that illegals are brought into the country, and then the Border Patrol completes the smuggling process to bring them in with vouchers. And our own government destabilized the Middle East and allowed Christians to be targeted so we have a moral responsibility to save the Christians. They're the group that is the most targeted. Even the UN last year had a headline, Christians most persecuted group in the world. And the article went on. It's doubled the last five years to levels unseen, a true crisis. All over the world, Christians are being targeted. Why? They're not involved in the wars. They're not pushing any of these agendas. But the globalists don't like them. There's a reason for that. Folks ought to ask themselves why this is happening, why this is going on. Now, there it is. There's the headline, Christianity, most persecuted faith worldwide. Okay. I want to go to your phone calls. Thank you for holding. Uh, if you just joined us, they're now declaring officially L.A. is the capital of Latin America. And that's in The Hollywood Reporter. L.A. touts itself as northern capital of Latin America for the Olympic bid 2024. Trump hammers his sanctuary city crap, that's a close quote from the Daily Mail, and jokes about replacing Obamacare with Donald Care as women cry with joy and 20,000 enthralled Texans roar for 90-minute speech. And we got Joe Biggs coming in at the bottom of the next hour. He was there to play some video and give us his take on that situation. He went up there as press was able to cover that yesterday. Right now, let's go to your phone calls. Thank you for holding. Let's talk to Dustin. You're on the air from California. Hey, hey Alex. It's, uh, it's Dustin. It's rainy here in California. I uh, um, definitely took my super male vitality today. It's my favorite InfoWars product. Thank you. Uh, I, I agree um, fullheartedly. I, I know that there's a lot of hardworking immigrants in this country. Uh, but it's the ones who come here and get the free handouts who are voting for the people giving them the free handouts. And it, it sucks to, you know, to drive to work every day and to pay for those people that are voting against me. Um, They've I'll enslaved you. The elite have made a deal with them. I mean, look in Sweden. In Sweden, 59%, 58% of welfare payments go to immigrants, 16% to the population. And it's similar numbers here. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is slavery. You got to pay for people so they can vote illegally to make you more of their slaves. And then the big corporations get cheap labor on top of it and are exempt from most of the taxes. That's called a screw job. And it's really hard to link out to these people, too, who get everything for free because 
these people aren't going to eat healthy. They're not going to get the right diet. They're going to be very easily influenced by the media, and they're not going to be able to focus on one enemy. They're going to be focusing on being racist, being feminist, being all these different uh, segre segregations. You know, they're going to they're going to have uh, identity I politics. Absolutely. Um, I, I have a, a small family, uh, one son and uh, my fiance, and we eat healthy every day, and it's not hard for. It's not hard to see what's going on in the world if you really look for your own news. And um, it's, it's hard to branch out to people who don't, who don't pay attention to what they put in their bodies. It's really hard. Believe me, I've gotten a lot better than I was five, six years ago, but I still don't take care of myself some. And it's just so essential that all of us try to drink healthy, clean water, eat non-GMO, uh, and get exercise, and also spiritually get right with God. I'm not lecturing anybody. I'm just saying I know that's the right path, and just the little bit I've done to turn that direction has been life-changing. God bless you, Dustin. Good to hear from you. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to William in New York. You're on the air. Hello, Alex. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right, my friend. Go ahead. Well, I got some uh, disconcerting news today. Uh, my sister, who uh, is an avid uh, lookout for anything to do protecting her children in school, uh, came across a Facebook post that was given to her. And this has to do with uh, the Philadelphia Catholic School District issuing a warning to parents, preparing them for vocabulary like something called lockdown. And what they're classifying lockdown is shutting down the school, keeping all the students inside the school without giving any kind of uh, permission to parents to pick them up, and guarding the school with fire department officials or police department to uh, guard. Keeping yeah, they're, their they're expanding the citywide lockdowns to government buildings and schools, but now to private schools for a car backfiring or a guy putting a rifle in his car for deer hunting, constant freaking out, constant false alarms to train us that we can be locked down and have our rights taken, and the cops go door-to-door -door and confiscate the guns. That's being run out of D.C. Uh, we saw that, of course, in Boston. We've seen that in other areas. Uh, it's not effective. It doesn't ever catch anybody. But it does train the public to live under martial law, and it conditions the police for that. And now the, the New York City is prepping security for the Pope's uh, visit, the Wall Street Journal reports, and, and testing lockdowns, you name it, with the military over the police. And again, I'm not bashing the military or the police themselves. I'm bashing the mission that's unconstitutional. And they got Michael McCall, the congressman out, the Republicans saying we've got to, you know, have bigger budgets and more. We're not ready to protect the Pope. The Pope sits on trillions of dollars in assets. The Pope lo lobbies us all day about how we should pay more taxes and have more illegals come in. The Catholic Church, it's its own sovereign state, needs to pay for Pope coming. Okay, and that's what this comes down to. I don't mean to be ranting. Go ahead. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I've been also uh, keeping aware of that. We are, you know, uh, keeping an eye out on what's happening in New York. Unfortunately, you know, we're, we're on Long Island, and that's not no more than 50 miles from the center of the city. And if anything ever did happen that was major, you know, that's one thing that I always explain to my family. You know, in, in the good day of traffic over here, it would take two hours to get out of the city. Imagine if it was on a lockdown. It would take us a week walking on foot, going through, you know, who knows what kind of territory that would become out there. Absolutely. You know, and... Well, brother, let me give you the rest of the story when we come back. Uh, I'm going to come back and finish up with you, then we'll go to Larry and others. The rest of the story of what a lockdown really is. Well, the lockdowns started after Columbine, and they were over the schools. Then it was a neighborhood around the school. Then it was a part of the city, and then it was half the city. All it is is a giant governmental power grab. It doesn't even work for its supposed uh, directive to capture whoever the shooter is. But it is a government precursor to martial law, just like we have seen with the TSA and the feds and the airports. And now the TSA is on the street with Viper teams all over the country. When I would tell people they were coming 14 years ago, because I watched a C-SPAN two-hour hearing about it, that they would then decide if you could have a job or not in the future. They'd be the new national police force. People laughed at me. Folks aren't laughing now.